Welcome back. In this video I'd like to tweak out our pathfinding system and also add some colliders to these objects here to edit our grid graph for our pathfinding. So the first thing I'd like to address is an issue with our system here. Okay. So if I select my robot and the robot begins moving, moving sometimes the robot moves in a weird way like so. I think I think it's trying to get to a waypoint too quickly. So we can fix this um, this could also be the, the size of the grid graph for example lots of things can um, change the way the robot moves but the easiest way to fix this would be to change the next waypoint distance it's, it's really high at the moment, it's 20 and the only reason we put 20 in the beginning was to make sure the robot finds the first waypoint so I'm going to change this to 4 the, the, the default waypoint distance and if we scroll down to when we work out the next waypoint distance so I'm just going to put here calculate next waypoint distance so if we're at the last waypoint the the next distance will be zero because we, we don't need to look for any more after we've finished our path else if if the current waypoint is one if it's the first waypoint it can be 20 in this case so the robot can find it no matter what because when I was testing this the low numbers don't seem to work we need a higher number so the robots can find its first waypoint okay so let's test things out now I think things will be a bit smoother okay so here we go this it's not happening as much now so that's good another issue is the rotation of the robot okay and we change the rotation here we use the transform look at we change the position and the rotation okay so okay. if I move the robot up I'm expecting the robot to keep looking upwards but it turns around sometimes okay not all the time in most directions for example but when it's walking in this direction it seems to turn around quite a lot and this is to do with the uh, the rotation here so a way we can fix this is say is saying if the robot hasn't reached the last waypoint we want the robot to look at the to look at it but if the robot is kind of already moving towards the last waypoint once it arrives it doesn't need to change direction anymore so we, all we need to say is if the current waypoint is less than again path vector path count minus one because this is stored in an array so minusing one would be the last index of this vector path so as long as we're not on the last waypoint, we can look at the direction of the target. Okay, so let's t again test this out. Okay. So moving upwards, I'm not expecting the robot to turn around now. Boom. Okay, robot stays in the same direction now. Cool. So the the other thing I wanted to do here was was the colliders. So we can do a range of things here with the colliders to change the grid graph. The first thing is that we can select our solar farm and the select mesh because the select mesh is always going to be the same shape as the unit itself. And in this case it's a cube. So as you can see the layer here select mesh. We could go to the A star pathfinding system and where we have collision testing we can also put the select mesh in our mask so when I play the game now and the, the, the grid is generated as you can see we cannot walk past the uh, walk through this thing here that's one way we can do it um, but what about things that don't have a collider I mean we could add one here for the wind turbine component physics box collider for example just at the end we could just make things a bit smaller 0 0.5 0 0.5 it's going to move it so this will this will be fine for our turbine but what about the UFO because if we attach a box to this um, the robot will not be able to walk either side of the of the UFO so let's see what other things we can do. A sphere collider, well this will be poking out either side of the UFO. Um, so instead of doing this, I've opened the UFO and what we can do is just copy the shape but with a much lower resolution and then we can use this as the collider. So I'm going to select all the objects, make a new layer, add them to this layer 
and just keep this wireframe template here. So here we have a template of the UFO shape and as you can see this is way too detailed to um, create a collider with so instead we can create a very simple version of this so in the top view I'm going to drag out a cylinder I'm not very sure of the height we can just tweak things out and very quickly we can just create a very simple shape for the for the collider so let's extrude this let's bring it upwards I'm just going to try and match the shape of the UFO scaling inwards and again bring it upwards to around here and again bring it inwards like so turning around hide the grid pressing G to repeat the extrude, extrusion um, for some reason the, we've selected these faces as well I'm just going to deselect these faces so hold control if you want to deselect okay so G again bringing down cool so we've matched the shape of the UFO but with a lot less polys once we've done this we can simply grab this go to file export selection within my projects folder in the models folder I'm going to create a new one called colliders I'm going to call this UFO simple as that we don't need to export the animation or anything so exporting so back into unity now we've got our colliders folder the UFO I'm going to change the scale applying this and I'm going to drag it onto the UFO shape so it's way too small at the moment so what I'm going to do is let's go to the um, wireframe mode on our in our scene and bring things up a little bit so I'm going to go on full screen here tilt it aside and just match it with the UFO itself a bit more ok that's pretty good so once we've done this we can go back to a textured and simply turn off the mesh renderer so we could actually remove it but if we wanted to edit the shape we can always turn it turn it back on again ok so just bringing it up a tad just tweaking the shape cool let's remove the animation component uh, I don't know why that's there so the last thing to do would be to add the, the collider so we can add a mesh collider to this so if I turn off the mesh renderer we can see this collider in the scene okay so once again I think the rotations out a little bit might be a good idea to create the both the shapes before you play with the rotation okay so this lined up quite good let's select the unit itself we don't need this box collider anymore okay so let's bring this down just as an example so it's not going too far into the uh, terrain okay so when I play the game now I'm expecting a big gap between each of these three objects so let's play okay let's drag the game into a different view okay so we forgot to do the layers very important thing so grab the collider I'm going to rename this UFO collider we could either do the select mesh or the the um, obstacle so for the UFO I'm going to do the select mesh just makes sense Oops. so that just makes sense really we can use this as a select mesh as well if we wanted to and for the turbine I'm going to use the obstacle because we can't se select the turbine no we don't change children so let's play the game now okay so that looks good um, if you're having trouble with the, the spacing of this um, area we cannot walk on we can make it bigger or smaller by changing the capsule on the um, collision testing here so we could change the diameter to 2 and that's half it the height is alright I think so 
now the gap shouldn't be so much cool like so okay so I think I'll leave it here for the video the pathfinding system seems to be working very well now in the next video we'll move on to our units so thanks for watching